questions 14 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 14 to 20. Now, please look at the map I've given you of the house and gardens. We're here at the Information Centre. Follow the path marked with the arrow and the first area you come to is the orchard on your left. As you go further down the path, there's the kitchen garden on the right. And as you go round the first sharp corner, you will find to your left an area where different types of pear tree have been planted, as well as some lovely flowers. And this is known as Pear Alley, designed by George himself. Next to this is the greenhouse, where some exotic plants and fruits are grown. Follow the path round the second corner, and on your right you will see the entrance to the Mulberry Garden, with its 500-year-old tree. Past the Mulberry Garden, follow the path until you reach the front of the house. I suggest you spend a good hour wandering around this lovely building. A guide takes visitor groups round every two hours. If you would like to purchase any of George's books or other souvenirs, then leave the house by the side entrance, where you will find our shop, which is situated between the house and the garage, which contains the magnificent old Rolls-Royce car, which used to belong to George. I expect by this time you may also be in need of a rest and some refreshment. Most visitors are, so why don't you visit the tea room on the far side of the garage? Of the tour, you have some time to look at questions 15. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Oh, well, here we are at the top of the tower and we're going to look at the view from each direction. Out to the east, the large buildings about a kilometre away are on the Olympic site. There's an indoor arena for gymnastics, a stadium for track and field and a swimming pool for races and synchronised swimming and also diving. If you look carefully down there, you can see the train lines. The Olympic site has its own station to encourage the use of public transport. There is also a car park, but it only holds a limited number of cars. The formal park has some specially created water features. If you look out here to the south, you can see a circular ornamental pond. And around to the west, you can relax and sit on a bench to smell the flowers in the rose garden. And finally, up to the north, if you look in front of you now, there's a lake with a small island in the centre. You can hire rowing boats at the boat shed, which you um, can't see from here. But if you look through the trees, you can see the cafe, which has lovely views across the water. OK, let's climb down now. We will go now and have a look at the nature reserve section of the park, which has opened up natural wetland to the public. The mangroves have been made more accessible to visitors by the boardwalk built during the park's upgrade. You'd think that people would come here to look at the unusual plant life of the area, but in fact it's more often used for cycling and is very popular with the local clubs. This is the far end of the park, and over there you can see the frog pond a natural feature here long before the park was designed. Just next to it we have our outdoor classroom, 
a favourite spot for school parties. The area is now most often used by primary schools for biology lessons. And finally, let's pass by the Waterbird Refuge. This area is in a sheltered part of the estuary. That's why the park's viewing shelter is a favourite spot for bird watchers who can use it to spy through binoculars. You can watch a variety of water birds, but most visitors expect to see black swans when they come to the shelter. You might spot one yourself right now. Well, here we are back at our starting point, the visitor centre. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Welcome to Greenvale Agricultural Park. As you know, we've only been open a week, so you're amongst our first visitors. We have lots of fascinating indoor and outdoor exhibits on our huge complex, spreading hundreds of hectares. Our remit is to give educational opportunities to the wider public as well as to offer research sites for a wide variety of agriculturists and other scientists. Let's start by seeing what there is to do. As you can see uh, here on our giant wall plan, we are now situated in the reception block here. As you walk out of the main door into the park, there's a path you can follow. If you follow this route, you'll immediately come into the rare breed section where we keep a wide variety of animals, which I shall be telling you a little more about later. Next to this, uh, moving east, is the large grazing area for the rare breeds. Uh, then further east, in the largest section of our park, is the forest area. Um, south of the grazing area, and in fact just next to the reception block, is our experimental crop area. In the middle of the park, uh, this circular area, is our lake. Uh, these two small rectangular shapes here are the fish farms where we rear fish for sale. To the east of those is the marsh area which attracts a great many migrant birds. Uh, in the southeastern corner beyond the marsh is our market garden area growing vegetables and flowers. Now listen and answer questions 14 to 20. Now, we've also put together a map which we've sent out to all the residents in the area. And on the map we've marked the proposed changes. Firstly, we'll plant mature pine trees to provide shelter and shade just to the right of the supermarket in Days Road. In order to address the traffic problems, the pavements on the corner of Carberry and Thomas Street will be widened. This will help to reduce the speed of vehicles entering Thomas Street. We think it's very important to separate the local residential streets from the main road, so the roadway at the entrance to Thomas Street from Days Road will be painted red. This should mark it more clearly and act as a signal for traffic to slow down. One way of making sure that the pedestrians are safe is to increase signage at the intersections. A Keep Clear sign will be erected at the junction of Evelyn Street and Hill Street to enable traffic to exit at all times. Something we're planning to do to help control the flow of traffic in the area is to install traffic lights halfway down Hill Street where it crosses Day's Road. Now, we haven't only thought about the cars and traffic, of course. There's also something for the children. We're going to get school children in the area to research a local story, the life of a local sports hero, perhaps and an artist will incorporate that story into paintings on the wall of a building on the other side of Hill Street from the supermarket. And finally, we've agreed to build a new children's playground, which will be at the other end of Hill Street, close to the intersection with Carberry Street. Wonderful. Now, what's the next stage? Well, the final plan... Will... That is the end. Tell you about our new wildlife area. Hinchingbrook Park, which will be opened to the public next month. This slide doesn't really indicate how big it is, but anyway, you can see the two gates into the park and the main paths. 
As you can see, there's a lake in the northwest of the park with a bird hide to the west of it at the end of a path. So it'll be a nice, quiet place for watching the birds on the lake. Fairly close to where refreshments are available, there's a dog walking area in the southern part of the park, leading off from the path. And if you just want to sit and relax, you can go to the flower garden. That's the circular area on the map, surrounded by paths. And finally, there's a wooded area in the western section of the park, between two paths. OK, that's enough from me, so let's get on and have a look. That is the end of section, section 2. You will hear a man who owns a holiday home talking on the phone to a woman who is staying there. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 13. Hello? Hi, it's Laura Carlton here. We've just arrived at the holiday flat, but I can't get the hot water and heating to work. Oh, right. That's easy. Don't worry. In the upstairs cupboard, you'll find the water heater. You'll see three main controls on the left at the bottom of the heater. The first one, the round one on the far left, is the most important one for the heating and hot water. It's the main control switch. Make sure it's in the on position. The switch itself doesn't light up, but the little square below will be black if the switch is off. <laughs> That's probably what's happened. It's got switched off by mistake. The middle one of these three controls, you'll see it's slightly larger than the first one, controls the radiators. If you feel cold while you're there and need the radiators on, this needs to be turned to maximum. The last of the three controls, the one on the right, is usually on about a number four setting, which for the water in the taps is usually quite hot enough. Below the heating controls in the middle is a small round plastic button. If there isn't enough water in the pipes, sometimes the heater goes out. If this happens, you'll need to press this button to reset the heater. Hold it in for about five seconds and the heater should come on again. Then there's a little square indicator under the third knob that's a kind of alarm light. It'll flash if you need to reset the heater. Mm, it sounds complicated. <laughs> I'm sure you won't have any problems with it. There should be some more instructions on the side of the heater. Call me back if you can't make it work. OK. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Now let me give you some idea of the layout of the farm. The building where you bought your tickets is the new barn immediately to your right. And we're now at the beginning of the main path to the farmland. And of course, the car park is on your left. The scarecrow you can see in the car park in the corner beside the main path is a traditional figure for keeping the birds away from crops. But our scarecrow is a permanent sculpture. It's taller than a human being, so you can see it from quite a distance. If you look ahead of you, you'll see a maze. It's opposite the new barn, beside the side path that branches off to the right just over there. The maze is made out of hedges which are too tall for young children to see over them, but it's quite small so you can't get lost in it. Now can you see the bridge crossing the fish pool further up the main path? If you want to go to the cafe, go towards the bridge and turn right just before it. Walk along the side path 
and the cafes on the first bend you come to. The building was originally the schoolhouse, and it's well over a hundred years old. As you may know, we run skills workshops here, where you can learn traditional crafts like woodwork and basket making. You can see examples of the work and talk to someone about the courses in the Black Barn. If you take the side path to the right here, just by the new barn, you'll come to the Black Barn, just where the path first bends. Now I mustn't forget to tell you about picnicking, as I can see some of you have brought your lunch with you. You can picnic in the field, though do clear up behind you, of course. Or if you'd prefer a covered picnic area, there's one near the farmyard, just after you cross the bridge. There's a covered picnic spot on the right. And the last thing to mention is Fiddy House itself. From here you can cross the bridge, then walk along the footpath through the field to the left of the farmyard. That goes to the house, and it'll give you a lovely view of it. It's certainly worth a few photographs, but as it's a private home, I'm afraid you can't go inside. Right, well if you're all ready, we'll set off on our tour of the farm. That is the end of section 2. 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, a word about the layout of the building. The auditorium, stage and dressing rooms for the actors are all below ground level. Here on the ground floor, we have most of the rooms that the public doesn't see. The majority are internal, so they have windows in the roof to light them. Standing here in the foyer, you're probably wondering why the box office isn't here, where the public would expect to find it. Well, you might have noticed it on your way in. Although it's part of this building, it's next door, with a separate entrance from the road. For the theatre manager's office, you go across the foyer and through the double doors. Turn right, and it's the room at the end of the corridor with the door on the left. The lighting box is where the computerised stage lighting is operated, and it's at the back of the building. When you're through the double doors, turn left, turn right at the water cooler, and right again at the end. It's the second room along that corridor. The lighting box has a window into the auditorium, which of course is below us. The artistic director's office is through the double doors, turn right, and it's the first room you come to on the right-hand side. And finally, for the moment, the room where I'll take you next, the relaxation room. So, if you'd like to come with me... That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. OK, that was something about the collections, and now here's some more practical information, in case you need it. Most of the museum facilities are downstairs in the basement, so you go down the stairs here. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll find yourself in a sitting area, with comfortable chairs and sofas, where you can have a rest before continuing your exploration of the museum. We have a very good restaurant which serves excellent food all day in a relaxing atmosphere. To reach it, when you get to the bottom of the stairs, go straight ahead to the far side of the sitting area, then turn right into the corridor. 
you'll see the door of the restaurant facing you. If you just want a snack or if you'd like to eat somewhere with facilities for children, we also have a cafe. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll need to go straight ahead, turn right into the corridor, and the cafe is immediately on the right. And talking about children, there are baby changing facilities downstairs. Cross the sitting area, continue straight ahead along the corridor on the left, and you and your baby will find the facilities on the left hand side. The cloakroom, where you should leave coats, umbrellas, and any large bags, is on the left hand side of the sitting area. It's through the last door before you come to the corridor. There are toilets on every floor, but in the basement, they're the first rooms on the left when you get down there. Okay, now if you've got anything to leave in the cloakroom, please do that now and then we'll start our tour. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. The sheep market is one of the main centres for art and history in the whole of the country. If you look at our map, you'll see some of the main attractions there. Most visitors start from Crawley Road at the bottom of the map. The Reynolds House is one of the oldest houses in the city and is open to the public. It's on the north side of Crawley Road, next to the footpath that leads to the public gardens. The area is particularly interesting for its unusual sculptures. The thumb is just what its name suggests, but it's about 10 metres high. You'll see it on Hill Road, across the road from the bank. The museum's got a particularly fine collection of New Zealand landscapes. It's on the east side of the sheep market, on City Road. It's on the other side of the road from the public gardens, immediately facing the junction with Hill Road. The Contemporary Art Gallery is on a little road that leads off Station Square, not far from the public gardens. The road ends at the gallery. It doesn't go anywhere else. That's open every day except Mondays. The Warner Gallery specialises in 19th century art. It's on City Road, near the junction with Crawley Road, on the same side of the road as the public gardens. It's open on weekdays from 9 to 5 and entry is free. Finally, if you're interested in purchasing high quality artwork, the place to go is Nucleus. You need to go from Crawley Road up through Station Square and east along Hill Road until you get to a small winding road turning off. Go up there and it's on your right. If you get to City Road, you've gone too far.